All right, we're looking at uh, hydrotherapy, the theory and practice, and we're, we'll <clears throat> continue to look at the practice of hydrotherapy as we move forward here. <clears throat> so just a reminder, in any type of medical intervention or therapy or uh, wellness practice, you should do your own due diligence in making sure that what is said is, is actually going to be good advice for you and not just blindly accept anything uh, <clears throat> without you doing your own due diligence. Back in uh, 1903, Thomas Edison uh, made the bold statement that there won't be medicine to be given in the future, but the doctors will be primarily instructing their patients on the care of their bodies and what they should eat and the prevention of disease. So in 1903, that was very forward thinking. And even today, unfortunately, that seems to be a forward thinking notion. <clears throat> but even, even so, and even before that, 1885, um, Ellen White stated in the Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, <clears throat> that there's only one way of practicing the healing art that heaven approves. And basically, it's the simple remedies of nature uh, that won't be taxing on the system. So pure air, water, cleanliness, proper diet, purity of life. Uh, and we're focusing on the water part here in our series. <clears throat> and they don't go out of date. They just become lost to the skill because it takes time and effort to, to implement them. Third John 1 verse 2 admonishes us to take care of our souls uh, because as our souls are healthy, the rest of our body is healthy, primarily because we're right with God and we're following his laws of health as well. Romans 12, 1 and 2 remind us that it's our reasonable service to pre present our bodies as a living sacrifice. So, so that means they should be as perfect as we can possibly make them and, and spotless. Uh, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, not being conformed to this world, <clears throat> because that's the perfect will of God. <clears throat> and again, reminded in Ministry of Healing that because our bodies are the temple of God, uh, that should be the highest incentive to care for our bodies and our physical powers and they're fearfully and wonderfully made and that should be a study to preserve our body temple of the holy spirit not our own temple but god's temple it's the temple of the holy spirit um, from harm and defilement <clears throat> so tonight we're going to start off looking at the partial chest pack so it's the same as the heating chest pack except that you're only using a wet cloth on the chest versus around the torso, uh, including the sides and the back. The chest pack itself wraps all the way around, includes the sides, uh, whereas the heating chest pack, the partial chest pack is just across the front. Uh, it allows the person who's helping to uh, give a heating type pack uh, to the frail or feeble, uh, because the frail and feeble may not have the capacity to adequately warm the total chest pack, and it may too, take too much energy and worsen their condition or their state. Uh, so the partial chest pack allows that treatment to be given, but in a, a less overall uh, taxing method. So when you're applying the partial chest pack, you can use a cotton. Uh, any shape will do um, only on the chest area. Uh, you want to wring it out so it's non-dripping. So do a good wind on that on that cotton cloth. It doesn't have to be a towel in fact, probably a thinner non-nap uh, cloth would be best. Uh, and then apply that to the chest area. So just right on the on the, the front of the chest area. And then cover with fl flannel. So it's similar to a dry pack, uh, although you've got the, the, the wet layer of cloth down there right next to the skin. So you wanna use the partial chest pack only during the if you're using it for during ammonia, it should only, only be during the acute pneumonia phase. <clears throat> uh, during the recovery phase, you're gonna be using a heaving um, or, or a partial um, chest pack. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so you, you wanna just be careful in the different uh, applications of, of hydrotherapy, particularly in the chest during pneumonia in particular. So a dry chest pack, is a variation of that where you're not using a wet cloth, you're just having a flannel covering. And <clears throat> this can help create heating because you're insulating it, but it's not uh, it's not heating the water starting from a state of coolness. So the benefit is it, it can help keep the individual warm between treatments, just maintain warmth. So it's a warming pack, uh, but just doesn't have the cooling that warms up that creates the body's uh, 
uh, ability to to react in a warming fashion. So this is particularly useful in those who are are again weak and frail, thin, or extremely aged, and not able to warm the moist cloth. They just don't have the energy, the BTUs of their body to to warm that up and dry it out. So it's best for for early and pneumonia stages, the dry chest pack. So this is a chest X-ray uh, showing an area, uh, a lobe of the lung, the right lobe of the lung here that has fluid in it. The, the left lung there, you see the L up on the upper right corner because you're looking at the patient view straight on. And that other part there is actually the heart. So the left lung has a little bit less space in it because they have the heart projecting over into that space on the left side. The right lung has a greater greater lung capacity. And there's a difference in the number of lobes between the rest left and right lung as well. But this shows that a lower lobe of this individual's lung has fluid in it. And that's what this in is indicating that there's uh, pneumonia present there. <clears throat> and on the, on the web right now, there are lots of different x-rays comparing pneumonia to pneumonia associated with uh, SARS-CoV-2 and uh, the regular um, non-pneumonia individuals. And it's interesting to look at those radiographs as far as their differences go. <clears throat> so applying uh, that dry that dry chest pack, use only a flannel covering on the chest and it can be applied over a thin t-shirt. Uh, again, it's for, for weak or thin individuals. The wet pack, uh, in, in addition, creates restriction on the expansion of the chest cavity during breathing. The dry pack, there's less friction and it doesn't cling as tightly. And so it's easier to breathe with the dry pack. So someone who's really weak, not only do they have to overcome that resistance from the from the pack and, and then heat up the wet, uh, <clears throat> uh, but they also have just the, the wrap itself that has some restriction of just the expansion of the rib cage for breathing. <clears throat> so when, it, when a wet pack is applied as tight as it's supposed to be, it does have some restrictive capacity on the on the lung capacity. Uh, <clears throat> so avoid a wet pack for those who are, are frail or very weak. Just uh, another reminder about that. So next we'll be looking at a large area uh, coal to heating pack and that is what's known as the wet sheet pack. So we've seen that this picture and some like it a number of different times. This is just a quick overview of that. We have the, the individual lying on the, the bed here, they've already been wrapped in their sheet. Uh, they have a, a flannel blanket that is there that they will be wrapped in uh, next. And then they have a, another covering that comes on in the final step that uh, keeps them nice and warm. So they're, they're bundled up just like a little burrito there. Um, <clears throat> and it's often fastened to a degree so that if they, as they're sleeping and turning, they can bend their knees a little bit and change position. But um, it's a, uh, it seems to me like a fairly constrictive uh, pack position uh, for for the treatment stage, <clears throat> but it keeps the the cloth, the cold cloth, as close contact and an insulating value of the of the blankets to do their their best job. <clears throat> so there's four stages of the wet sheet pack, and we'll go into these uh, in more detail uh, later on. <clears throat> next week in some of their various uh, um, details, but there's the cooling wet sheet pack, there's a neutral wet sheet pack, a heating wet sheet pack, and a sweating wet sheet pack. And essentially a given wet sheet pack goes through those four stages during the course of its application. And then finally, the, the fifth stage would be just um, dried out and they, you, would, you would eventually cease sweating. But you start out with a bed sheet that's wrung out of cold water. So again, it has no nap. Most sheets don't have a nap to them at all. They're very, just uh, a low a low profile fabric. Uh, it's uh, draped around uh, the person and then they're covered with uh, one to two blankets. And this you wanna do in a fairly timely fashion. Don't wanna rush, but just uh, be, be expeditious about it. Uh, and then the body reacts by a rapid warming state, uh, and then it becomes a moist heating pack. Uh, so they, they drape the wet sheet that's been wrung out, so it's not dripping wet, uh, cover it with one to two blankets as an insulating value, and then the body reacts by warming up. 
So the benefits, uh, it's again, it's dependent upon the length of use. There are some things we'll talk about a little bit later on that as you go through the four stages, you can pause any one of these stages. Uh, there are techniques to do that if you want to have a particular phase be uh, prolonged, or you can actually just stop at any, any stage along the way, not necessarily keep it through its entire course. And this would require paying attention to your, your the individual's uh, temperature and status and speaking to them to get their uh, feedback because it's always important to have a lucid, a lucid patient. So application, uh, <clears throat> you want to initially begin out by by explaining to the individual who's going to be participating in this what what's happening uh, through the course of it. Many times, uh, an enema or a colonic is important at the beginning part before you start wrapping them and getting them wrapped up. And part of that may be just to warm the interior, but it also may be, and it wasn't specifically stated. Uh, to actually cleanse the colon so that it isn't an issue while they're wrapped up. Uh, so a 10 minute hot foot bath can be helpful because you want to start warm before you're applied cold. You don't want to start anyone ever in a hydrotherapy situation cold. You want to have them warm before applying the cold and then you can warm them back up again. Um, you can use a cold compress to the head uh, and that creates a temperature differential, warm feet, cool head, um, kind of like a, a, hot, a hot foot soak. Um, the entire body should be warm. And in uh, people who are maybe uh, entirely cool, a hot bath can be used, a total body immersion if necessary. So the, the area, the space, you want to prepare by covering the, the bed with a, uh, a plastic sheet, plastic sheeting, to just to protect the bedding material in the area that you're working. Uh, having a, a floor that is durable for that too uh, is nice rather than having having carpet on the floor that can be a soggy situation but use what you have available and it really shouldn't be soggy really because your 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 sheet should be wrung out and not have water dripping but just to protect the material around it then double blanket on the bed you want to fold it lengthwise so the far side hangs longer and over the pillow uh, the lower half of the pillow and you can kind of see how this individual is laying, laying there in this diagram. Um, you want to wring that bed sheet as dry as possible from cold water, but not ice water. Uh, you don't want to completely shock it. You're not using a, it's not an ice pack. It's just a, a cold to warm heating pack. Um, have the person lie on the, the wet sheet and the blanket. The sheet extends uh, above the uh, shoulders three to four inches. And then the arms are held up in the trunk uh, and the near leg are wrapped. So it doesn't really show the holding up the arms, but you want to wrap the middle section. You're wrapping the near arm and uh, limb first. And then the second, the third picture in this diagram shows the final wrap, including the other arm and the other leg. Then pull that blanket in, tuck it snugly. Basically, you want to have the feet and sides and, and you're not going to, you don't want air pockets. Uh, you you want, don't want drafts. You want to wrap them in that in that blanket quickly so that there isn't evaporative cooling that takes place with a breeze and a chill that would be brought on. So both the wet sheet and the blanket um, to prevent that that chilling effect of any drafts that could occur. So checking with the person as you're going through this treatment, make sure the warming effect begins uh, right away. If it doesn't, um, you should you should start again, um, get them back warm again, and then. Um, and then reinitiate, maybe try it a couple times. And if they don't get a reaction, maybe just pause and, and try it again at a different time. But they should get a warming effect uh, fairly shortly after they get the, the blanket wrapped around them, around the wet sheet. It's kind of a little bit of a shock. I did a, a t-shirt, wet t-shirt uh, warming reaction. Uh, and uh, it's a little cold when you first put it on, but it warms up uh, really quickly. So you can actually add additional blankets to aid that warming effect. And you can actually put a Turkish towel, which is just a towel with a high nap, up around the neck to prevent airflow as you're moving from moving in and out around the neck area. Sometimes a hot water bottle to feet can increase the heating effect of the pack and help, help the individual stay warm. So during the pack, you can see a picture on the right and a, and a, and a lower picture of two different examples of, of that pack. One is being attended uh, much more uh, closely 
than the one the bottom the one looks like there in a cocoon just kind of left there to lie um, i think i'd probably appreciate the upper one a little bit more attention um, just to to make sure that uh, things are being taken care of but you want to make sure that uh, within about 10 minutes there's heating taking place and sweating will begin always keep the feet warm if they get chilled you don't want a chilled condition because that ends up especially the feet <clears throat> And they're, they're kind of a, a reflex point for keeping the rest of the body warm. A warming effect on the feet can help keep the whole body warm. Anybody who lives in a house where you walk around in stocking feet in the winter rather than slippers, if you keep your feet warm or go to bed with cold feet, it's just difficult to, difficult to get to sleep. So keep those feet warm. So monitor the body temperature before and after and, just, uh, and even during uh, to make sure that the temperature doesn't elevate beyond uh, what it should, or just to monitor that it actually is increasing. Following the wet sheet wrap, once it's completed, those stages, um, cool cool them down. So do a, a cool sponge down after the, the pack is removed, which is the wet sheet pack and all the toweling, and uh, do a brisk, a brisk dry down before um, uh, having them rest following that, so rest comfortably in a draft-free area with a nice warm blanket, so they won't have the won't have the pack in place. But they any hydrotherapy treatment following that hydrotherapy treatment, they should continue to uh, rest for a while following that for at least half an hour. Then you can repeat that wet sheet pack again later in the day. Uh, if you have a fever, use that pack daily to help uh, reduce the fever. Each pack usually runs its course in about fifteen to twenty minutes. And then uh, again, following with rest and nourish with liquid. So that'd be like fruit juices or vegetable juices um, and, and things like that to, to nourish and hydrate the individual who's using the wet sheet pack. So that's the initial application of the wet sheet pack. Next uh, time we'll be looking at the specific phases that that wet sheet pack goes through the, the one, two, three, and four phases of that. And, learn how to prolong it in an individual phase and uh, know when you're going through those phases. So to review this, you can go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com and look there for past episodes in this series or other series and look for future episodes as well.